Um, hello everyone, um, my name is Sean and I'm uh, based at SCAT in St. Gallen in Switzerland and I very quickly want to uh, show you how uh, we use um, a D groups to it's really it's an integral part of our network um, and the, how we've adopted it over the last year. So for those of you who don't know uh, about uh, Rural Water Supply Network or RWSN, uh, we were set up 20 years ago as the hand pump technology network and very much behind um, the, uh, the introduction of things like the, the, the India Mark II hand pump uh, and the, um, the, the AfriDev and things like that. So that's very much coming from a technical background and over, over the last 20 years it's, the remit's expanded and the membership is currently at around 2,500 members in 94 countries. So I've just checked on our G groups page, we're up to 97, so we've got bagged another three countries uh, today. So that's that's good. Um, we've got four areas that that we're that we're interested in in the current strategy period. So we've got sustainable groundwater development, which is looking at issues around hand pump technology, around cost-effective boreholes, and around water resource management. We've got, got equity and inclusion that's being managed by WaterAid, which is uh, looking at issues around human rights to water and around disability access to uh, water facilities and to water point mapping. We have the management and support theme being managed by IRC in the Netherlands, which is looking at sustainable services. And then we have accelerating self-supply, which is looking at how to enable rural households to uh, improve their own water systems. In terms of who we are as a network, um, so we have a secretariat of uh, two and a half people here at SCAT and we have, you can see our main partners on our executive steering board which includes the African Development Bank, SDC, UNICEF, World Bank, Wardraid, WSP, IRC and, and SCAT. And then we have a range of active uh, active members um, around the world and very much a mixture of national governments, private sector and, and NGOs and, and academics. So what did we choose D groups? D groups. Well we um we came on uh, this year and uh, one of the reasons we did so is that we wanted a, a self-managing me membership database. We had a, a mailing list on a Excel spreadsheet which was an absolute nightmare to, to maintain. Um, and uh, we were looking at a way of a mechanism of distributing our quarterly newsletter. But also we conducted an internal review of, of how we as, as a network and found that really there wasn't that much interaction between members uh, other than at some of the face-to-face -face events that we organise every uh, three or four years. And when we were looking at online platforms to do this, we, one of our main criteria was something that was accessible to those with limited or low bandwidth internet because clearly the people that we want to reach are those that in, in rural areas um, and those that uh, probably don't have uh, with the uh, broadband connections. So what does it do that, that and how do we use it? I mean, w over the last year we've had been using it for structured e-discussions. So our first one in April this year was on human rights to water and sanitation. And that was in conjunction with the, um, Katerina de Albuquerque, who's the UN Special Rapporteur. And she was able to use the output from, from that e discussion in, in her work with, with the UN. Uh, we've recently done uh, another e discussion on, on uh, cost effective boreholes, which was a lot of drillers from, from about 30 different countries discussing um, how to professionalise the, the water oil drilling sector. And we're, we're currently in the process of an e discussion on accelerating self supply. So it's, it's been a really effective tool at generating interest and generating, getting synthesizing knowledge uh, within the network. We've also had some ad hoc discussions on things like water point mapping and mobile phone technology, which is very much a, a, um, uh, a hot topic at the moment. But also another use that uh, has emerged is, is a sort of a technical query service where we've had people 
email in with uh, questions like where can I get a certain valve part for an AFRIDEV in Ethiopia or um, I was out in the field and I came across this sort of hand pump, what on earth is it? And people have been, uh, members have been extremely helpful in providing detailed responses to those sorts of technical queries and that really adds value to what we do as, as a network. Uh, in this slide is really showing where dgroups fits into our emerging sort of online ecosystem uh, that we've developed over the last year or so. So uh, we have uh, our main website, which is primarily a, a, a our sort of front door. Um, it's, it's our library. We've got about 300 documents there. We have uh, a, a WordPress blog where opinion pieces from members goes. We have a LinkedIn account, which is which ha does have some active discussions and is is a good way of getting people engaged. But we use both LinkedIn and Twitter as a way to raise the profile of the network and to get people from there to migrate to the groups and to be involved in those those discussions. So in terms of how we manage it. Uh, it's managed here by the Secretariat, uh, but we also hand over moderation rights to our team coordinators as well. So, so we've got uh, some of our, our collaborators in, in WaterAid and the IRC, for example, who are moderating some of those, those groups. English is the dominant language, but as a network, we've pledged to become bilingual in English and French, um, but this is something that's, that's quite challenging and uh, uh, both in terms of our main publications and, and uh, website, but also how we run the network through dgroups. So very, very quickly, really, in terms of what we've learned over the last year, um, it's been very useful because members have opted into dgroups, so we know that they're there and they're active, whereas before, when it was just a mailing list um, on Excel, we didn't know um, we didn't know whether people were there or not and actually reading the materials uh, unless the email sort of bounced. The e-discussions have created some really tangible outputs and strengthened relationships be uh, between people in the network. Um, and our challenge now is really to uh, manage uh, and disseminate knowledge with, with active practitioners. And so we really want to get more people um, district water officers, NGO practitioners, private sector in in uh, various countries in, in into the network uh, through D groups so that they can share and collaborate. So really, our our take uh, the lesson that we've learned really is that thanks to D groups, uh, the networking element has really been put into the rural water supply network, and that's been the real added value for us. Is is what it's enabled people to do to collaborate and to communicate with each other much more effectively. And finally, uh, my my question to the audience is is what we'd like to learn from your experiences, or one of the many things we'd like to learn, is how can we best make some of these interactions more multilingual? Uh, because while well, the majority of our membership is in, in Africa, we want to make sure that uh, the Francophone Africa and, and Anglophone Africa can properly interact. And then you have uh, obviously Latin America and, and, and areas like that. So we want to make it as inclusive as possible and would welcome your ideas how we can do that. So thank you very much. That was, I hope I didn't speak too quickly, but that was, um, but thank you for listening.